the world's women or the women's world's gliding championships 2022 279 days to go uh, do you know what i haven't even looked today but it must be about look. that number it's there <laughs> on the website tell me all so, about it tell me about the championships so um the gliding championships it's um at the gliding center at husband's bosworth Yes. Uh, from the 13th to the 27th of uh, August uh, next year. Um, and what most people have no idea what a, a gliding competition is about, so let me tell you. Uh, we'll have between probably 50 and 60 of the world's top international, female international glider pilots. Mm-hmm. And uh, after the opening ceremonies on the, the 13th, but then from the 14th to the 27th, we'll be racing every day. And a glider competition... Um, what we're doing, it's, it's a race. So it's like Formula One, only higher up. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we'll be racing each each day, unless the weather conditions aren't good enough. We'll be racing somewhere around maybe four, five, six hundred kilometres yes. um, at speeds. If we're lucky, over 100 miles an hour, certainly over 100 kph all on, you can see the sun behind me, all on the sun's power, all on free energy. We need a bit of a hand getting into the air, but after that, it's all on free energy. um, And uh, it is just, oh, it's the best sport in the world, Regan, I promise you. It is nothing better, nothing better to do. So, So each day we'll be flying that, and there are three separate classes for different sorts of gliders. Um, from the lower performance ones to the very, very high tech, super sleek, nice little number you've got showing behind you there. So, yeah, Sebastian uh, Carver. Oh, well, there you are. Yeah, he's not bad. As, yeah. as glider pilots go, he's not bad. But but in fact, the the <clears throat> the top women pilots, not very far behind. Yeah. And and yeah. I guess the, the thing to say, you know, why a, a women's gliding championship? And people ask me this because actually gliding, you're sat in the glider. It's physically not terribly um, hard work, but it's amazingly mentally hard work because each day to do that, you, you might launch and you might be flying for six or seven hours. And during that time, you're taking decisions every two, three, four seconds, something like that. Yeah. Uh, and, and you get up, you rig your glider, you find out where the course is today because we set the course depending on where the weather's good. Um, and uh, then you go out and fly it. You come home, you go to sleep, you wake okay. up the next day, you do it again. Um, so what's different for women is simply that there are, like in air sports, like in aviation generally, and like in the sort of engineering subjects, a low percentage of women flying it. Right. So in, in the UK, it's about 7% of uh, pilots, glider pilots are women, um, about the same for commercial aviation. So the reason we actually bid to hold the competition in, in the UK, and I would normally, I would normally be flying in the competition. Yes. I've been in the British team for many years, um, but... We have um, a thing called Women Gliding, which is a support network for uh, women gliding pilots. And we thought if we're trying to make a big noise about this and show other women, lots of people having great fun gliding, what's the best way to do this? So we bid to hold the world. And I thought, well, if we're going to do that, I want to be director. So I'm actually the competition director, um, which is really exciting for me, running our equivalent of the Olympics. How good is that? Yeah. So, so we're doing it in order to show other women that they can fly. They can fly in actually what's an amazing eco sport, uh, huge fun. Yes. Um, and they'll see just some of the top role models doing it. Along the way, we'll, we'll hopefully be getting, particularly over the middle weekend um, and at the opening ceremony, which is going to be in uh, Market Harbour, the local ta- town with all sorts of parades and things. So it'll be great fun. Um, and we'll be inviting the public to, to come along, see how glider racing works. We're going to have some other things going on. Um, we're in the process of working out, you know, things like food fairs and things like that going along, just to encourage everyone to come and get involved. So uh, that's probably most of what's happening and at the end of it we end up with three world champions 
the three fastest women and in the 18 meter class, which is the uh, the highest performance uh, class, it's going to be the fastest woman in the world. Oh, yes. Amazing. So it's, it's the 11th FAI Championships. And it's amazing what you say about it being an eco sport. I mean, there's lots of conversations in my sport of skydiving right now, how we justify spending all the uh, Avgas with the, the carbon footprint to ca uh, compete. And there's lots of new um, technology with, you know, electric powered aircraft. And we're looking into that mm -hmm. as well. But gliding is, you know, as, as well with hand gliding and um, you know, yes. other, other, other I mean, airports without yeah. engines. On, on the right day, you can, in the right place, you can take off without expending any uh, any fuel whatsoever if you bungee off, off a ridge site, um, like up at the Long Mind in Shropshire and so on, where you get pinged off on a rubber band. We won't be doing that. We will be launching behind tow planes, so we will be burning fossil fuel. But for us, this is a first um, step on the way towards trying to work out how to do it more sustainable more sustainably yes. so um we're we're hoping and if there's somebody out there that can help us with this we would so love to get the uh rolls royce uh, electric plane or anyone else who's developing an electric plane to talk to us and, and just come and bring one of their airplanes in and show us yeah. because at the moment we need a hand for that first two thousand feet and then we're sorted Yes. Um, and uh, there are so electric winches already out there in existence that can winch people up. But at the moment, the rules don't permit us to do that uh, in national competitions. Ah. But uh, but uh, it would be so good if we could get an electric plane towing some of us up there. How good yes. would that be? That would be perfect. Um, so yesterday, I was um, I was out and about yesterday, and I was looking at the sky like we always do when we're uh, in aviation, and I could see one of those roads in the sky the cumulus going away into the distance tell everybody how that works how you get the the lift how you can follow those clouds and so, clouds. so it's 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 all convection sun shines on the ground ground heats up this bit heats up more than that bit so it heats the air next to it and up it goes and of course this is what's uh, <clears throat> as the air goes up it cools and eventually it condenses it forms a cloud and the puffy summer clouds they're cumulus clouds they're all showing where air has gone up Yes. So what we're doing is we're flying underneath and doing circling or doing whatever we can to stay in that rising air. Because a, a glider is basically, it flies exactly like a plane with an engine, but it can't climb. So it's like walking slowly down an up elevator. If you, we've got to come down slowly, but yes. if the air we're going through is going up faster than we're coming down, you, you will go up overall. So now you just described a street just a long line of cumulus clouds so if we've got a nice thermal source like a big town for yeah. example uh heats it up up it goes and of course as soon as it's let go of the ground it drifts off downwind same thing happens again next one goes and you end up with a line of clouds running off downwind out of the picture where i'm pointing um and if on on the right day you can basically you don't have to stop you can just fly under the one pull up gently in the rising air there, push and carry on to the next one. And uh, overall, that's how you make the really high speeds. It's just just huge fun. And of course, it's it's not silent because you're flying quite fast through the air. We'll be flying at uh, maybe 100 knots or so. Uh, but the gliders are very slippery, so they're very quiet, very it's not very much noise at all, just a little hiss of the air and the instruments telling you whether you're going in through rising air, squeaking gently to us. Uh, and no engine noise. You're just looking down on the world, staying up there on, on free energy. Oh, it's the best thing, Regan. It, it is just so good. Oh, you, you're giving it a good story. Tell me about your gliding, Liz. Tell me where, where it all began with you. So, well, I was, I was never, I had no sort of aviation background or, or anything. I mean, I'm an engineer, uh, but I was more a boaty than uh, a pilot in any sort until I was doing some uh, postgrad stuff up at Cranfield University. And of course, they do a lot of training there, air flying training. And I was sat there one day and I realised that the noise of the engines had got into my head somehow. And I thought, fancy giving that a go. But I didn't have very much money and I thought, hmm, don't think I can afford that. Yeah. 
so I went and tried gliding, which I knew was cheaper. I discovered it was much cheaper. And I had that first go and I just got completely hooked. That first flight, that was it for me. The idea that you could be launched up into the air and then there's just silence and you flying around. And then you, either you find the next piece of rising air or you land. And there's no no two ways about it. It's all immediately all on it. it and it's the difference between power flying um, and gliding is that gliding is definitely a sport in that, you know, if you don't find that next piece of uh, rising air, you're going to land. And yeah. so it's the challenge of of. Met Office have the biggest computer in the world or the various Met Offices. So, so it's just every day a brilliant challenge. And you can do it nice and gently at one level or you can do it it's as hard as you want it to be. So uh, it's just absolutely super. It's I, I was doing some the, reporting the best thing and I can't imagine doing anything better. It's, yeah, I, I was doing a bit of reporting from the sail playing Grand Prix out in Poland and it is really intense. I mean, getting towards the... The end and the rush and the, the, the actually racing each other like Formula One, like you say. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. And, and and as I say, that the the Grand there are two formats. The Grand Prix format they have fairly short races. Yes. Um, but in in the sort of usual international format, we we would have slightly longer races. Um, and and so as I say, you really are taking decisions every few seconds. Uh, and if you take the wrong one, you might end up having to land yes. day over, you know. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, it's 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 great. But for those that are not doing it at the top level, it's also something you can just swan gently around floating in the rising air, just looking down at how gorgeous the countryside is, you know. Uh, so it's it's just yeah, it's a lovely thing to do. And I think some people... and we'd love everyone to come and see it. Yeah, exactly. And I was going to say about your preparations, uh, Liz, how is it going for you? Is it something you're working on every week or every day or once a month? Is it quite intense? Yeah, right ab now? absolutely. We've got to, so so we had a, a practice competition summer just gone. Um, sadly, of course, because of the COVID regulations, none of our overseas friends could uh, come come to that. So yeah. we had to get some uh, internationals for, who were based in the UK to come along and fly in that yeah. one. But um, so what what we've tested out all of the things we want to do, and uh, <clears throat> but but actually, so running the comp is one part, but the whole in, inviting people in, so. Yeah in public events side and so on we're just working on all the plans for that and for example we've made a whole load of um stem resources uh, activities for for schools gliding based ones with nice videos and so on that we're just just in the process of uh, starting to promote to to schools to teach schools about gliding and so on so you know it's it's a big project the project is not just about delivering the competition although yes. that's obviously the vital beating heart of it but it's about just trying to show women role models pilots and and, and just in, engage with the local uh, community and, and show everyone what a great sport it is we do fantastic well liz i wish you every success with it we'll catch up in early spring next year and see how it's going for you but i want to say a massive thank you thanks for joining us today on air sports news and giving us an well, insight into your event it's, it's been a pleasure to be here. And can I just point everybody at, uh, we're on Facebook. Our website is WWGC for Women's World Gliding Championships 2022.co.uk. Have a look there and uh, join the fun. And we hope to see some of you uh, in the summer. And meantime, Regan, I would love to come back and tell you how it's all going in the spring. Fantastic. Hopefully I can get there and have a look in person. Let's see. Oh, fingers crossed. It would be good to see you there, for Thank sure. You. Take care, Liz. Thanks for joining us. Okay. Cheers, Regan. All the best, everybody. Cheers.